Hi, and welcome to Learn DaVinci Resolve. In this video, I'm going to show you how to knock out a black background. This was a question from one of the viewers who uh, want to take kind of footage like this that has a black background to it, uh, which is supposed to be transparent, and be able to cut out the black and overlay it on video like this. So I'm going to show you a couple different ways of doing it. One just using the color tab and one using fusion. So we can see two different ways of doing it. So stay right there and we will be right back. Okay, so this happens once in a while where you get some asset like a, a lower thirds or some 3D object or a piece of footage that is supposed to be transparent, but because of the format it was in, it doesn't have an alpha channel, and so you end up with footage that has a black background to it, and you need to knock out that black and make the black transparent. So there's a couple different ways of doing it. I'm going to show you the, the two different ways I do it, just kind of depending on, you know, how I feel or how, uh, you know, I want it to look. There, the end result should be pretty much identical. So we're going to look at the two different ways. So the first one, I'm going to take this and I'm going to go to the color tab. And uh, let me make this, well, I'm going to make it fit for right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to right click in the nodes and I'm going to add alpha output. And I'm going to grab from the blue uh, box there and drag that over to the alpha output uh, node there. Okay, so now we need to knock out this black. So I want to make sure I'm on the qualifier page, the little eyedropper. I'm going to click this first one, the color picker, and I'm going to click in the black. And it did exactly opposite of what I wanted to do. So I'm going to be back here in the selection range, and there's an invert tool. So I'm going to select that. Now you would think that we're done, but we're not. And I'm going to show you why. I'm going to zoom in here nice and tight and you're gonna see the problem that I have right off the bat so let me scroll over here okay so here you see I have a lot of noise right there and we, we want to get rid of that so a couple different ways of going about this first I can use the clean black and just drag that over and uh, tell it's gone and this will normally do the case but what I want to do first, I'm going to reset that, is I'm going to go to Denoise, and I'm going to pull that over just a little bit, maybe into the 5, 6 range, and then do my clean black. And I think, for me, what that does is it usually gives me a little cleaner of a effect, a little smoother of effect. And we can use the blur tool. To blur that in a little bit and you know make it a little fuzzier the in and out ratio we can play with that and it just kind of depends on the clip that you're working on most of the time just between clean black and denoise you're going to get it where you want um, you got to be careful and play back the footage all the time to make sure that you're not getting some speckles in other parts of the footage but normally that's going to be the do the trick for you. So I'll go ahead and I'll play that one. And um, yeah, it looks pretty clean. All right. So now I'm going to take the second example and I'm going to use Fusion to do it. So I'm going to select it, make sure my uh, timeline is or my marker is above it, and I'm going to go into the Fusion tab. Now in here I have my media in and my media out. So that's the footage coming in and what my output's going to be. So making sure media in one is selected, I'm going to hit shift space and I'm going to start typing Luma, Luma Keyer. So there it is right there. I'm going to add that. And all of a sudden we do have an instant effect right there uh, with a little transparency. And the controls I'm going to use are simply the low and high on the channel here. So if I move, the low over I get more transparency which I don't want and if I move the high over to the left you'll see it'll start filling in and if I wanted a little transparent 
that's real easy to do. I can just uh, leave it over a little bit or I can bring it over. Now let's also zoom into this. I'm going to go 200%. And again, I'm going to check for the speckling, the little noise issues that can ar arise there. So if I go too far, you see I start picking up that noise again. So I want to bring it over to the right, but I don't want it too far that I have the transparency. So it's going to be a nice balance in there. And again, we also have things like blur controls that we can use, uh, clipping modes, contract and expanding, gamma. Uh, there's a lot more things you can do in the fusion side using the Luma here, but for this purpose, typically the only thing we need to do is use the luminance channel and just adjust the high and the low. And when I go back to the edit page, there it is. It's sitting there transparent, all ready to go. Does one give you a better result than the other? And I really can't answer that. I have tried a number of different clips and I can make it look exactly the same either way. Um, the fusion side does give you a few more options that might help in some kind of conditions. Um, so it really comes down to a personal preference. I try to not use fusion when possible because once I go into fusion, now I have more CPU resources, more GPU resources. It's going to take longer to render. Um, Notice here, I had to, I have uh, render cache clip turned on, so this will actually play back smooth. Where if I didn't, it would be very jerky playback on this uh, 2016 MacBook Pro. Where on the edit side, this will generally play back pretty smooth regardless. But on the Fusion clip, I really do need to render that cache clip uh, option in order for it to play back smooth. So. If resources aren't an issue, if playback's not an issue, Fusion is fine. Gives you a few more options. If you want a little bit better performance, then just do it in the color tab. Uh, it's To me, the color tab is going to be faster, but it may not always give the best results. Same with the Delta Keyer and some of the other tools that you can use either way. Typically doing it in the edit page and the color page are going to be faster, but not necessarily better results. But in this case, I, I get the same results either way. So I don't see a big advantage other than uh, resource utilization. So hopefully this helped answer your question on how to take a black background and knock out the black in order to overlay a video. So thanks for watching. Really appreciate all you subscribers out there. If you're not a subscriber, which 77% of you are not subscribers, Subscribe to the channel so you get notified every time I put out a new video. And be sure and click the bell icon so that you actually do get notified when there's a new video. So thanks for watching, everybody. Really appreciate it. And I will talk to you next time. Bye-bye.